to access the dialog box within the family and part editor, which will be going in. There's a couple ways to get to it, which we'll be showing in some videos. But basically, we have these different views of the parts, and we'll be going through these as well. We call the definition of a part. So that's a, from the top pull down in the family part editor. That is the symbology in the 3D model. So when you place a wall, that will be the level, color, line, style of the wall. One quick note, it does write it, embed it to the object in the DGN file. So if you change your mind, you want to be changing the symbology of a wall color line style in the 3D model. That's something you would have to modify. All the other things we'll be looking at, we can be changing on the fly for our drawings, like our drawing symbology. We can override in the cut and reflected view. We can have cut patterns. We can have poche. We can have uh, patterns of concrete. We'll be looking at some things we have for ducts and pipes. We have center lines that are optional. And then we could also have rendering linked to the parts. So as we place a door or a wall, the rendering can already be pre-set up. I mentioned before the report components, they're still in there. It is legacy from our previous versions, but it is still there for you to access and do reporting on. And then as well as drawing notations, some auto dimensions for forms that is also more of a legacy tool. So when it comes to the actual parts, when you go on to create a part, there's in the structural, there are some placement options for the structural members. There's also structural data. So there's a regular part definition and then a structural part definition that has these additional fields and capabilities when you're working with structural parts. And then there's also still here the analytical material, but that also is legacy. We have some newer tools for doing our analytical modeling of going to STAT and RAM without having it in the BIM model it goes directly to analysis. So within the part dialog box, when you go into edit or create a part, there's two types of parts. There's a triforma part, which is a base building type part. And then there is a structural part for the part type. There's a description. The little, if you can see on my screen here, I'm saying, okay, my name of my part is block wall. And the description is block wall. Well, it gives you an opportunity to tell more about the block wall. And we even have the opportunity with our new flyovers in update eight to be pulling different information about objects on the screen. But it's also an opportunity, which we'll be talking about later, especially with the Connect version. We can have our parts located at a work set, a workspace and then the organization data set. So you could be putting that information in the description to say, this is a block wall, but it's a project block wall that other people and other projects might not be seeing this wall. So it's a way of adding more information. Again, the symbology down here, where it says default model attributes, the level, the color, the line style, those do get written into the active file. And then there's dimensions. These are default dimensions of the thickness and height. This is here in metric. Typically, the sizes of parts are driven from the data group system. So in the past, this was something that was important. Now we only use it for generic forms. So you don't need to be having six inch or eight inch block for eight inch block wall. The data group will drive the part sizes for you. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.